covid 19 which is widely accepted that the main transmission mechanism is through the droplet borne pathways however many researcher and studies are considered that this virus can also spread via air borne route and remain in the air for few hours there is still studies going on how this transmission is there but we all are accepted that the main transmission which is because of the droplet on pathways so based on this uh, the knowledge the 2 meter rule was developed which is again based on the analysis which is done based particularly with respect to the large droplets and the research research indicates that large droplets from seizing can travel more than 2 meters or even if there is no air movement so based on this one the social distance concept which is came from this particular study that that's why 2 meter distance that is che foot ki duri that is essential and as we know this coronavirus particles which is only 0.8 to 0.16 micron diameter so there could be many virus particles in high micron droplets floating around the air in the air so this transmission not only through the droplet but also there may be possibility through air bond also so still scientists and the doctors worldwide are still struggling to understand this virus and its transmission so if you consider this spread of covid 19 so generally there are three things or three key routes are there through which this particular virus spreads that is aerosols droplets and surface so that is what when we breathe in air when close to an infected person who is exhaling the small droplets and particles that contain virus so through this there may be chances having these small droplets and particles that contain virus land on eyes nose mouth especially through splashes and sprays like cough and sneezing that is the second thing and third thing if we touch our eyes nose or mouth with hands that have the virus on them so there may be chances and it also transmits through the droplets which come out by coughing sneezing droplets of an infected person so if we think about a closed space the risk is more because the spread of covid occurs which is most often when the infected person is in close or direct contact with the another person so here the risk of spread of this virus is higher in the crowded places and long and poorly ventilated places if the ventilation is not there then in that case the air which may recirculate it within that closed space and which will create infection so and uh, so we have to be careful when we sit in particularly in the closed loop environment so to consider this let me give an example of patient 31 when this covid which is new to us in the last year there was a always uh, there was a government agency who always traced the infected person's travel history as well as his locations so there is one case which is in the south korea which is very famous case as patient 31 in the south korea if you see this particular graph the first case there they have observed on january 20 when 35 year old woman which is traveled from wuhan city and then slowly slowly because of that one the infection started and particularly for this february 20 after this there is a sudden rise in the infection started in their particular country and in the particular location of the sinchinji church cluster so this is because of one particular lady she attended this church in a span of seven days two times and before that one she was she was met an accident and then she hospitalized and then she attended this church on 9 february as well as she attended on 17th, uh, 16th february so th this two times she attended this particular church and she spread this particular virus through this particular location of church to the other uninfected persons so the infection the infection rose to such a level on 25th march 
the total korean cases were 9137 and out of this 50% of cases because of only this particular location that is those who visited this church during february 9 and february 16 they got infected so just this tells that if one person is infected then he can infect others in a exponential manner when he visit to the crowded places so that's why we have to be very careful when any infected person is there then in that case the solution is we have to go with the improved indoor air ventilation or we have to provide the natural ventilation as much as possible or through mechanical means with 100% fresh air so the improving indoor ventilation can play a major important role in this and which minimizing the built up aerosols in a space and will reduce the exposure risk the other intervention such as the minimize the aerosol concentration includes the face covering and minimizing the respiratory activities known as generate more aerosols such as singing or such as uh, any particular physical exercise hence the more main focus should be on the appropriate design of the ventilation and the operation of this particular system so any guidelines or anything operational strategies if you want to make then we have to think with respect to ventilation only so you can see here this particular picture where in the natural ventilation which is coming through the through the windows and the doors and some ducts and also there are some locations where through the mechanical ventilation also the air changes are maintained so if i give you another example of the poor ventilation and the good, good ventilation you can this, see this particular picture wherein if any infected person is there or aerosols are there or the droplets are there then within after the one hour also they may be available in that particular space whereas in case of in case of uh, the good ventilation where where if you open the window then within one hour you can see all this infected or the droplets or the aerosols which are not present so that's why either this is done with the filters or maybe with respect to the natural ventilation so there is a question in our mind that ventilation is important but how much ventilation would be needed to substantially reduce the airborne transmission of particularly sars cov 2 and what is the air distribution and the room size that matters with respect to the ventilation so these are the two questions which affects the the possibility of infection in the particular space so also we should have a question that what is that calculation methods are available so that we can calculate the infection risk assessment and we can incorporate this particular infection risk assessment into the existing our guidelines so the infection which is basically Uh, occurs that is which depends on the product of the concentration that is the how much quantity of the infected person is generating and with respect to how much time he is there in that particular space so here this particular in order to do this particular calculation there are some models are also available but at present the ventilation designs which are available in that infection risk is not particularly addressed in any of the ventilation guidelines so the outdoor air ventilation rate must fulfill at least the national minimum requirement set in the local building code or equal to the regulatory documents that is what people are at present are following and they are forced to follow but there is a one example where our hospital ventilation systems have worked well in covid-19 conditions as the cross infection have been under control so this is because of the the proper ventilation or the cross ventilation which is provided in the hospital which is capable to keep the aerosol concentrations at low level so in order to find out the airborne infection risk there are different models which are available this particular presentation which talks about the infection rate calculations with respect to the wells relay model 
and which is calibrated to the covid 19 with correct source of strength that is the contra emission rates so any infection which is possible through the how much viral load which emitted in the express in terms of contra emission rate that is e in terms of contra per hour and the contra is defined as the dose of the airborne droplets clean required to cause the infection in the 63% susceptible persons so this is what the wells relay model with respect to this we can able to find out the probability of infection if one person is infected in that particular crowd so this is what the p stands for the probability is equal to 1 minus e s to n where n is the number of quanta inhaled which again depends on the time average quanta concentration qb is the volumetric breathing rate of an occupant that is the infected occupant and the d is the duration of the occupancy of that particular infected person so n is a multiplication of c a v g q b and d and if we know the n quantity we can able to find out the what is the probability of the infection in that particular close space so in order to find out because it is a time dependent so we should know the what is the rate of the concentration is there rate of infection is there so for that if we take the derivative of dc to dt with respect to time that is equal to e by p minus lambda into c where lambda which is stands for the first order loss rate coefficient for the quanta so e is the quanta emission rate that is infected person is generating v is the volume of the room and the lambda with which if we provide the proper ventilation if we provide some air filters in that particular room then that will reduce this particular viral emission load so lambda that's why the other quantity lambda c which is deducted from the what is the quantity of the infected air which is generated in that particular space so this particular lambda which depends on the there are different strategies what we apply in particular that location that may be one of the strategy that ventilation the other strategy that is the deposition on to the surface if any droplets which are deposited but after some period it get disinfected or the virus decay itself or the filtration of the portable air cleaner or there are some solutions which earlier present presented here like uv disinfection solutions or other solutions with respect to that we can able to find out the what is the efficiency of that particular solution and that value we can consider here in order to find out that infection so to do this this is what the equation which is generally used that is the k filtration that is the efficiency of the filtration which is calculated by the quantity of filter is there that is n uh, efficiency of that particular filter and divided by v this is one equation with this we can able to find out or for the portable cleaner with high efficiency particle rate that is a hipa filter with efficiency we know that efficiency of that one and with that efficiency we can consider that and we can put the k filtration value in this uh, earlier equation so this if this equation uh, equation if we solve then the, at the initial stage when t is equal to 0 then there is a quanta concentration is 0 that is the beginning point of the occupancy and then this may goes to the time dependent t so if we solve this equation if we put this ct well, c value in this particular equation then we can able to get the c average is equal to this so this equation is used in order to find out the infection rate so in this particular model there are some certain assumptions are also there so the certain assumptions are there as one infection individual who emits the sars cov2 quanta at the constant rate throughout the event that means the rate of emission is considered as a constant here there is no prior source of quanta in the space as i have mentioned here the condition is zero for the initial t is equal to zero the latent period of the disease is longer than the time scale of this model and the infection respiratory aerosol quickly becomes evenly distributed throughout the room so that is what the assumption which is made in this particular model and the infection quanta are removed by first order process reflecting the sum of the ventilation filtration deposition and inactivation 
so these are the four major structure considered in the particular uh, the first order process so let me give with so, some example. example this uh, particular the ventilation uh, calculator so that you can able to understand how this particular ventilation which plays a role can you able to see this uh, excel sheet yes sir okay so this is what uh, the whatever the equations which are put in this particular excel sheet and with this if i consider a open plain office which where the ventilation rate is 1 liter per second per meter square and if it is 2 meter per second if here it is 1 meter per second then the probability of infection which is 0.071 and if i consider the ventilation rate as 2 then in that case the probability of infection is reduced to 45 if i make this as a 10 then in that case the probability of infection again getting decrease and in this particular uh, equation we have consider the decay rate of the virus as 0.32 which is again based on the literature which is available where they have reported one literature which is reported zero as a decay rate and another literature which is reported 63 and this value it is average of both the literatures and the deposition to the surfaces again this is also calculated based on the the experiment which is carried out by the several researchers and from this uh, the point 3 is considered that is for the one particular case it is considered a point point uh, 24 another case it is considered as a 1.5 per hour so that's why it is considered as a here point 3 and some additional control measures such as if you put the uv disinfection or the hipa filters in that particular space then again this lambda which will get added so here it is now 0.32 plus 0.3 it is 0.62 plus if you consider this particular solutions or any other solutions if you find out that efficiency then this particular total first order loss rate which will again get increase so with this we can able to reduce the probability of the infection so again here there are some another interesting thing is there if any particular close uh, uh, this space is there which is restricted space is restricted with respect to that also you can able to find out the the infection rate for example if the floor area reduced then the probability of particular infection is more as compared to the, the the space which is more for example if you consider the meeting room for the 6% it is 18 meter square for 10 it is 25 for it is 20% it is 50 that means in case of where the space is congested floor area is less which is designed again based on the 6 even though ventilation rate is constant everything is constant the infection is more in case of the the space which is less as compared to this more space so if the close space is there or the space of space is less with more occupancy there is chances of the probability infection is more that means crowd which makes the infection more so again let me come back with my presentation so again this depends on the other activities and the breathing rate as well such as if we consider we are resting or the oral breathing then the contact emission rate which is 3.1 and if we are doing some kind of activity that we if we are speaking then in that case the contact emission that means how much uh, we are emitting the aerosols so that is 42 conta per hour if we are doing some kind of la light activity with loudly speaking or that one in that case singing which is generated to sound that means obviously the infection is more with respect to this particular activity because the contact emission is more also the what kind of breathing rate is there if we are sitting in a office or classroom then our breathing rate is generally normal 0.54 meter cube per hour if we are doing heavy exercise that means sports then in that case 3.3 so that's why if you have seen the the government guidelines they have allowed restaurants before they are allowing the gyms there are there are always there are questions that why gymnasium is not open during the covid pandemic people thought that we are doing the exercise we are uh, uh, getting fit with respect to exercise 
but their particular in case of gymnasium they, they are doing heavy exercise so their breathing rate is more suppose by mistake any one person is infected then in case of the gymnasium the infection chances are more so that's why the gymnasiums are close in the pandemic and they have opened after this the rate of infection got decreased that time only government has opened this kind of uh, this kind of uh, activity complexes so this particular infection risk we have uh, calculated for particularly one of our case study we have done for the retrofitted bus uv retrofitted bus wherein uh, we have find out the what is the probability of the infection if we put this particular uvc retrofitting in that particular bus so for that we have considered there are two conditions we have considered that is one is the if the passengers are speaking and if the passengers are at rest that means poor breathing so for these two things the contact emission rate is considered 3.8 and 0.8 and the breathing rate is considered as a 0.54 and here since we have put the uvc then uvc loss rate coefficient which is calculated based on the dosage which is coming as 14.25 per hour and the decay rate and the deposition rate which is considered as 0.24 and 0.32 and the ventilation rate which is what provided this is what the air condition bus wherein 350 cfm is the ventilation they have provided and this is what the dimension of that particular bus so if we see the first case where in that particular uh, bus if the 0% fresh air is there that means 100% recirculated is there and one passenger which is affected with respect to the occupancy time of 8 hours after the 8 hours of the journey he may infect five persons five more persons from that particular bus and if we provide some 30% of the fresh air that is what this is what with respect to the no fresh air this is what the case to where 30% fresh air we are providing and 70% as a recirculated air then then in that case the risk of infection getting decreased so that is 1% and the 100% flash air if you are giving then it is 1% so this is with respect to the if the passenger is sitting if the passenger is talking then in that case 3.8 quanta per hour is his, his emission rate and with respect to this you can see there is a drastic change out of 45 passengers 19 passengers will get infected after 8 hours of journey and if we want to reduce this then one solution is that we have to give provide the fresh air so that reduces almost uh, only four persons are getting infected that means 15 passengers we can save by providing 30% of fresh air if we provide 100% then there are chances of only two persons will get in infected so these are the two things which are based on the if we have consider only ventilation if you are not consider any other major as stand alone systems or uv retrofitting solutions so if we provide uv retrofit solutions and then in that case because uv retrofit solutions again kills the virus then in that case you can see here with 0% fresh air also there may be chances of only one passenger get affected and if you provide 100% fresh air then they obviously there will not be any chances of person getting infected so this shows that if you uh, along with the ventilation if you provide you will see retrofit kind of solutions or some other solutions then we can reduce the infections so this particular uh, the implementation we have done at the lucknow ac bus where uh, this uh, particular uvc retrofitting has demonstrated so this is from our uh, my first part of presentation let me come to the second part now we know the infection which is coming through the ventilation but the what is the ventilation that we have to provide the ventilation is nothing but the supply of the outside air to the indoor interior air motion and the replacement of the uh, replacement of the violated air so the requirement of ventilations that is for the health and comfort purpose also for the comfort ventilation and for the environmental factors like air temperature humidity 
air speed together with some factors and such as clothing level of activity so these are the requirements of the ventilation so if we consider the natural ventilation design guidelines which are present with respect to indian scenario wherein they have considered that comfort ventilation criteria which is uh, uh, top in terms of two criteria that is the one is the effective temperature condition and another one is a tropical summer index condition so these are the two indices with which we can talk the thermal comfort because we cannot talk the thermal comfort in terms of only dry bulb temperature it is a combination of humidity temperature and it is a combination of air so with respect to the effective temperature the thermal comfort condition for ventilation is 27 degree and with respect to tropical summer index which is developed by cbri and which is incorporated in this particular code as well as sp41 which is talks about 25 degree to 30 degree centigrade and the desirable wind speed if you provide then in that case with along with dry bulb temperature even though there is a humidity if you provide a little bit wind speed through proper ventilation that means opening of the window then we can feel comfortable so this is what the desirable wind speeds are there in order to make occupants thermal comfort so if we cannot able to provide this wind speed through our natural ventilation that means opening of the windows ducts or the doors then in that case we have to go for the mechanical ventilation because with respect to wind speed we can able to go with only up to 2 meter per second so above this one we have to go for the mechanical means that means we have to use fans we have to use some some other air handling uh, instrument so that it can give the proper wind but to the equipments and if you talk in terms of the acceptable because the guidelines which are made particularly for the 25 to 30 degree but there are some possibilities with which we can able to some adjustable comfort we can talk that with uh, more than 30 also up to some extent we can with our cloths and other managing things we can feel comfortable so in that case if there is a warm condition then in that case with warm condition also you can see if uh, 36 degree temperature is there and 30% humidity is there and with 1.72 if we can provide wind speed to that particular space then we can feel comfortable and above to which with window we cannot able to achieve then in that case we have to go with the mechanical ventilation that means we have to switch on the fans so how to find out then the what is that area of opening which is required with respect to feel comfort with the ventilation so for that this is what the equation which is given in the sp41 which talks about a is equal to q divided by kb where k is the coefficient of flow which again depends on the wind which is perpendicular to the opening or which is 45 angle to the window and with this if we know the prevailing outdoor wind speed then with respect to this we can able to find out the area of opening required wherein q is the desired rate of air flow which you can consider from the present existing guidelines so with this we can able to find out the a area and if you want to provide two particular area of opening then in that case we can consider a1 opening and a2 opening and with this total area of opening you can uh, solve this equation and you can able to get the a1 and a2 for particular condition so if your windows are are uh, having some uh, 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 obstruction then in that case we can consider uh, the value of k as 0.125 so the calculation for the particular understanding purpose understanding purpose one example is taken from the rookey where in the windows wind speed is considered as 0.56 meter per second that is 2 km per hour and wind is incidentally on the window wall with the opening size as 1.2 meter by 1.2 meter so if this is the, the the given data then with respect to that we can able to find out what is the q which is coming in from that particular window that is 0.48 meter cube per second so uh, if in case of the 
uh, any uh, mesh is used, then in that case, ventilation rates can be reduced to 50 percent. So, coming to the guidelines with respect to the COVID-19, because these are the guidelines which is not there with respect to the normal condition, these are the guidelines. With respect to the COVID-19 scenario, if you can see that there are some guidelines which are already presented by my colleagues with respect to ISHRE, CPWD, REVA and ASHRE. This uh, particular guidelines talk about the, what is the temperature, humidity level, but the guidelines doesn't talk to what is the ventilation rate which is required. If you consider ISHRE particularly, they are considering, they talk as maximum fresh air intake as 3 meter cube per hour per person and or 3.7 that is equals to 0.83 liter per second per person and which is too less with this particular ventilation we are not able to fight against the COVID. So the, the restriction of this particular guidelines this doesn't talk about the what is the ventilation rate which is required. They talk you open windows you uh, you take fresh air you you keep the space for two hours open and recirculate that air or use some kind of HEPA filters UVGI which is recommended. But the, what is the ventilation rate that doesn't come. So with this particular uh, our scientific study and the whatever the present guidelines we have revisited these guidelines and we have prepared new CSRI guidelines when on ventilation particularly we have considered at present residential and office building with respect to SARS-CoV-2 virus wherein we have studied the earlier the recommendations which is given in the NPC that is for the living room as three to six air changes but looking into the COVID-19 kind of situation where REVA also recommends that the ventilation rate which is required 10 liter per second per person or in other words we can consider as it is uh, uh, 1.5 to 2 uh, uh, meter uh, per person per, uh, per meter square per meter square so we have considered that particular uh, the conditions which are given in the REVA guidelines uh, that is the EN uh, standard and with respect to the ISO standards we have considered that one and we have modified our existing guidelines so existing was uh, which are reported in NBC 2016 this and with respect to new these air changes are modified. So for example living room the earlier it was 3 to 6 now it is modified to 4 to 7. So similarly it is modified for the, all the particular activities or the space uh, applications for the residential and non-residential. So this as uh, uh, they mentioned. Uh, uh, these guidelines are available on our particular website. So how to use these particular guidelines? We know this particular air changes needs to be used. Then with respect to the particular our condition, again if I take back the previous example where we know that what is the wind speed is coming and how the wind is incidating and we know the what is the living room space 5 meter by 4 meter by 3 then in that case how we can able to find out the what is the size of opening which is required so as we can consider from this new guidelines as 7 ACH required for the living room if you consider 7 with respect to the uh, the volume we can able to find out the Q quantity as 420 meter cube per hour and if you put this 420 quantity here and with uh, the window which is uh, incidentally perpendicular that is for that 0.3 a is unknown, 2000 is considered about 2 km per hour. Then, in that case, we can able to find out the, what is the area of opening is required, that is 0.83 meter square. So, with this, we can able to find out the, what is the size of opening is required, that is 1 meter by 0.85 meter. So, I will not talk much on these guidelines because these guidelines already uh, we are circulating to you. So, the, the gist of this CSRI guidelines for the ventilation is that is talks about the bring as much as fresh air into your home as possible. So bringing fresh air and outdoor air into home helps keep virus particles from accumulating inside. If the opening windows or doors are unsafe, consider the other approaches reducing the virus particles in the air such as 
using the air filtration or some UV kind of disinfection solutions. So your exhaust fan should be turned on over your stove top and whenever there is a uh, bathroom or your toilet kind of you can keep your exhaust fan on there. So these are the uh, just crisp I have given here. These are the crisp of that particular guidelines. There are some images are also there in that particular guidelines with which we can able to understand more how the particular uh, the single side ventilation is, what is the cross ventilation, and what is the cross ventilation with 45 degree. So you can see here this is what the single side where only one side window open is there. Other side there is no passage to go out this. Yeah, so air is circulating in this fashion. So if we provide the cross ventilation, which is best one, so with this you can see here how the air is flowing from the inward side to the leeward. So this is what one example if wind is coming from Potipa, how it is moving. Mm. So in the particular guidelines, you have provided, you have to consider these guidelines and you have to make some appropriate changes so that you can adopt this particular cross ventilation you can get the good cross ventilation in your room you can open the windows or you can open the door so that you can get the cross ventilation or even if in case of the single side window then also if you do some this kind of arrangement if you provide the duct then also the air circulation is possible so there are some other figures which also talks about the how the cross ventilation can be possible in case of the two sides windows the air circulation may be in this fashion it is possible or you can put the ducts over that one if any single side window is there then in that case you can put uh, the fan the facing towards outside so that whatever the containment air is there that will throw out and fresh air will get or you can provide some isolation room isolation room also you have to provide in a such way that it should be towards the leeward side so that whatever the contaminated air is there that will go out so in this fashion if you provide then you can prevent the infection of this particular covid-19 virus so in so in last uh, i just conclude my presentation the infection risk that uh, depends on the ventilation rate if the ventilation rate if you make proper then probability of infection getting decreased and the increase the floor area reduces the probability of the infection and the one interesting thing is that even the floor area is provided as per the standard the probability of infection increases with the less floor area having less occupancy another is the breathing rate increases the probability of infection is increases similarly though for the contact emission rate so thus to reduce the dose and the infection rate ventilation has to be increased and the occupation time to be reduced so this is what the, the summary with respect to the guidelines i will not go in detail now already i have presented so uh, this is what our uh, all the team members who have worked uh, tirelessly in order to prepare these ventilation guidelines as well as some of the test bed facilities uh, standalone systems and other covid related uh, things so uh, thank you thank you very much uh, and i am thankful to the organizer for giving me this opportunity to share the research work what we are carrying out uh, during this covid pandemic period thank you yeah